The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and welcome to the Hoop Ball DFS Today podcast. I am your host, Mike Patria. Riding solo for this wonderful Saturday, May 8th card. We got seven games to talk about. No early games, which is seems like a little surprise on these early slates or on these weekend slates. We usually get an early game or two in there. But they're all on the main slate, all starting around 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're probably wondering, where's Santino? And I'm, I'm sorry. I know you guys wanted to hear him. Uh, no, that's that's a joke. Let's let's be real. Uh, that voice... Uh, you just you didn't want to hear it on a Saturday. We gave you the day off. You know, we're switching shifts. He'll be taking the Sunday. I'll be doing his Saturday for him. Just a little easier on everyone's schedule. So feels different doing one on a Saturday morning. I'm looking forward to it. Got the coffee ready to go. Before we jump into anything, though, let's give a quick shout out to our presenting sponsor over at my bookie. You guys hear me talk about them left and right. I was using them last night. Santino touched on it. I've been hot lately. I've been pulling some good basketball cards. I've been winning some contests. I said, you know what? I need to go to the casino. He said, Mike, head over to their fully-fledged casino platform. You don't even have to leave the house. So that's what I did. I head over to my bookie. I get to play some table games all I want from the comfort of my couch 24 hours, seven days a week. They also have sports betting on every single line. Odds boost, prop bets, you name it. They got it. Parlays. You can head over there. Use that promo code HOOPBALL. H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L on your initial deposit. Right when you sign up, use that promo code. They'll give you a 50% deposit match on up to $1,000. So if you put in $1,000, guys, they will give you $500 for free. It's free money to play with in any way, shape, or form that you wish to do. Uh, you can use it on the platform. You can parlay it all in one in one go. However you feel it, use it over at mybookie.ag, promo code HOOPBALL. All right, we got seven games to talk about. I'm actually, I'm actually thoroughly excited about this slate. This is, uh, this is a slate I'm pretty excited about. It's got a lot of action that I'm interested in. It just feels like one of those slates where it just builds itself for you. You know, you don't need to get too cute. There's a couple spots where you can pivot and get a little cute, but I don't think we need to get too cute on this slate. And you'll probably hear me say a lot of guys that might be relatively chalky, but I'm okay with it. And we'll start right off in the first game: Washington Wizards. Traveling to Indiana, they're taking on the Pacers. 247 and a half game total. Washington favored by three. Highest game total of the night is in this game. Shouldn't have come as any surprise. We just saw these two teams face not too long ago, and it was a doozy. For the Pacers, Malcolm Brogdon, Jeremy Lamb, Edmund Sumner, all questionable. Jakar Sampson, Miles Turner, and TJ Warren have been ruled out. And on the Wizards' side of the ball, it's just Thomas Bryant and Denny Avdija. Both rolled out. They're expecting to have Rui Hachimura available for this game after missing that last game with an illness. Start off with the Wizards here. It's simple. It's simple, and it's simple for me every single time the Wizards are on the slate. I'm playing Russell Westbrook. He's my favorite stud of the slate. There's no doubt about it. There's a lot of guys you could choose from. I get it. Go for it. Wouldn't fault you. There's other guys that are well worth it. I'm just playing Westbrook. If I can get another stud, I'm going to get two in there. It's just that easy. The dude crushes the Pacers. He played him twice already this season. He's averaging 88 DK points against them. He triple doubles on a nightly basis, giving us a floor of pretty much what feels like 60. And on the worst nights, maybe 50. Sign me up. This feels like it's another 70 DK point game for him here. And I will be taking advantage of it. Outside of him, with Rui back, I probably won't go to Bertage. He's very scoring, reliant, score independent. Uh, not really ever chipping in any rebounds. That's kind of something we need from him. Otherwise, unless he's hitting 7-for-7 seven seven from deep, we're not getting a ton of value from him. And you could go to Beal. I just probably won't. I just prefer to play Westbrook or just spend up from on Beal to another stud. So for me, with a game total this high, it's weird, but it, it's only Westbrook. And on the other side of the ball, there's definitely some options. Um, I think in the earlier in this week when we saw these two teams face off, I ran it back. I, I played Sabonis. I played Westbrook. I have no problems doing that again in this one, especially if we see Malcolm Brogdon and those guys rolled out. If those guys play, I might I might temper my expectations as of now. A uh, little foreshadow of the, the way I'd rank my studs would probably go Westbrook, Jokic, and Sabonis. Those would be my three top plays. I don't think I'd pay the 9300 for the for Brogdon, even if he does play, or the 9100 for Levert. Just feels a little too expensive for me. Levert can get it done, especially if Brogdon's out. He'll be handling the ball majority of the time. He'll have 20-plus shot attempts most likely. All that good stuff will be there for him. I just don't want to pay 9100 for him on this slate. 
So I'll probably take a pass. And if I look at anywhere else outside of Sabonis, it would be a guy like TJ McConnell. And we would need Brogdon to be ruled out. Put up 40 points in these teams earlier in the week with no Brogdon. So great matchup, great pace, great opportunity for him. On to the next 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. We have the Detroit Pistons traveling to Philadelphia, taking on the Sixers. 222 in game total. Sixers favored by 10 and a half points. So second largest uh, spread. I'm sorry, third largest spread on the slate. A lot of lot of wonky spreads. Pistons dealing with a lot of injuries, as we know. Uh, a lot of people dealing with, I think, some personal things as well. Hamid Diallo looks like he will miss this game as well. Uh, he missed that last one due to personal reasons. Uh, on top of that, Josh Jackson, Rodney Magruder, Dennis Smith Jr. all ruled out. Corey Joseph, Jeremy Grant, Wayne Ellington are questionable. Mason Plumley is not listed on the injury report, so we should we should have some Mason Plumley action. How many minutes? Who knows? But he should be available in this one. Sixers on the second half of a back to back, so they do not have an injury report available for us. This seems like it's going to be a cakewalk matchup for him. Uh, you saw the game total yourself and the spread yourself. There's no reason to think that this game should stay any close. So I don't, I'm not going to be spending up on any of these big guys over here. I kind of imagine it's going to be very similar to their game versus Houston where we see 25 minutes out of the studs. We've been seeing that with these Philly guys when they get a game out of hand, they rest them. They don't need to play Harris. They don't need to play Simmons. They don't play Embiid. They play mid-20 minutes. And if they're playing mid-20 minutes, and they're not going to pay off these salaries. It's just that easy. So I, I just can't be overly invested. If you wanted to play, take the GPP approach and you know pivot against the game script of this one, I get that. And that's probably the only reason I would play anybody. If I'm looking anywhere, it would probably be at a guy like Dwight Howard at, at 4K. Uh, he's just a guy that I can see having a 20-point floor and a 30-point ceiling in this type of matchup, whether it gets out of hand or not. He should play 15 to 20 minutes. And it's just a great point-per-minute producer. And Detroit just bleeds points at centers right now. So I will play some Dwight Howard. And outside of that, I'll, I'll probably call it right there. You know, I wouldn't mind Seth Curry, but not a guy that I'm going to go out of my way and get exposure to. On the Pistons side of the ball, with all these guys, we got to have to see who's playing and who's not. It's that simple. Uh, if you know, if we get Corey Joseph and all these guys playing, you know, obviously there's a lot less value. If we see that Corey Joseph, Wade Ellington are rolled out, we can go to guys maybe like Frank Jackson at 5400, uh, maybe a Killian Hayes or Saban Lee. I, I don't mind looking at those guys, but I'm only playing the guys that I expect to play significant minutes in garbage time who are at a decent price tag. So. I won't play Plumlee because he probably wouldn't play in garbage time. <clears throat> I don't think I'd play Big Stu at 66, knowing that he's going against Embiid. Even if he doesn't start, he's still going to have to get uh, a couple minutes against Embiid. And it, with Plumlee playing, we're not probably looking at a 30-minute workload for him either. Sadiq Bey feels a little too expensive at 68. I think there's some other guys I'd rather spend up on. And then even Sekou, he's getting a price bump at 46. So I really just want to try to take advantage of the spots of the value I could or the spots where I feel like, you know, this game gets out of hand midway through the third quarter. I know my guys are still playing 25 minutes. The guys I think that would do that would be like Seku, Frank Jackson, Killian Hayes, Saban Lee. So keep, uh, keep your eye on those guys. Hopefully we get some better news later on in the day regarding the starting lineup. And once we do, that should probably answer a couple of the questions for us. But as of now, as I record this this morning, it looks like it's about 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is what I'm going with. I, I, I have to take the wait and see approach on him. On to the next game. Cruising through this. Memphis Grizzlies traveling to Toronto. Taking on the Raptors. Raptors dealing with some resting and some injuries themselves. 228 and a half game total. Memphis favored by four and a half points in this one. As far as the injury report, OG in a newbie. Chris Boucher, Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Vliet, Paul Watson all ruled out. You don't want to be is doubtful. For the Grizzlies, Grayson Allen, Sean McDermott both rolled out. We'll start off with the away team here. We'll take on the Grizzlies. This is just going to be a great matchup for these guys, knowing that they're basically their entire backwards out. Their best inside defender in Chris Boucher is out. They'll still have Siakam, and Siakam is great, but not necessarily a guy I'm, I'm worried about going against defensively. So I'll look at the top dogs here. John Morant, Jonas Valanciunas, both these guys very much out. If there's one guy I want to play, it's going to be Jonas, though. Uh, I love this matchup for Jonas. It's just picture perfect. He put up 60 DK points against his team earlier in the season. There's a little narrative involved, if you guys know. Uh, drafted by Toronto, played significant years in Toronto, never really had full opportunity in Toronto, always kind of stuck in like a 24-minute role. And uh, now he gets to show what he could do in 30. So I like Jonas. I like this price tag. I like the value here. So at 7,900, he would be my favorite play on this slate. I don't mind looking at uh, Desmond Bain or 
DeAnthony Melton as well. You can look at both those guys for value with Grayson Allen out if I had to prefer one. It's tough. Uh, Desmond Bain gets me that small forward eligibility and the forward eligibility, so that might just come down to construction for him. Uh, Melton has the higher upside, also the way more volatile floor. So both of them are a little risky. If we see that Desmond Bain starts, which I'm expecting we probably do, I'd probably feel a little bit more comfortable about him. But either one of those guys, plus Jonas, is very much in play. And I wouldn't fault you if you wanted to play Morant. just not a guy that I'm overly excited about. I'm the Toronto side of the ball. Pascal Siakam coming in at 9K. Feels a little expensive for the guy, but you know that Fred Van Vliet and you know Kyle Lauer are going to be out. This guy's taken at least 24 shot attempts. I said that, 24 shot attempts over the past three games. Uh, two out of those three, he's put up 70 DK points. I was all over him in that match, matchup against Washington. Uh, it paid off, dropped 44 actual points. Is this the same type of matchup? Absolutely not. Is it a good one? Absolutely. So if you want to pay the 9K for some spicy P, I wouldn't fault you. I just don't think I will. If anything... I might just go with the value here. Malachi Flynn at 4,700. He should play, uh, start at point guard, play significant minutes with both Lowry and Van Vliet out. So 4,700, he just feels like a chalky point guard that I'm sure a lot of people have ownership with, with a comfortable floor and decent upside too. You know, he might not get a 40, but you know, 28 to 35 feels like it's definitely in the realm of possibilities in this matchup. So I will play some Malachi Flynn for sure. And keep an eye on Gary Trent Jr. Now that he's back in the lineup, uh, he should be looking at Significant minutes, significant role, and significant shot attempts. And his price tag's down to 5500 now, so that is a very swallowable price tag. So for me, on this Toronto side, it will be the value. It will be the wings. It will be Malachi Flynn. It will be Gary Trent Jr., and I wouldn't mind taking a stab at Ken Birch if you're really feeling yourself. All right, almost at the halfway point. This is crazy. This is a weird slate where it goes from a 7.30 Eastern Standard Time game at the halfway point to the last... Four games are all at 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So all late games. We're not going to have a lot of the news for these games. So, you know, these are the guys that you're going to want to have slotted in towards the bottom of your lineups at your util spot, your forward, your guard spot. That way, if you need to adjust, you could. It's easier. Don't play these guys in the top spots because once they lock, you will be stuck. OKC Thunder traveling to Golden State. I believe Golden State is done with their road games. I think they're finishing out the rest of them on their home court. 15 point spread in this one for Golden State. Uh, 224 game total. This one looks like it, Vegas does not expect to stay close for very, very long at all. Uh, we'll look at this OKC team. Check out the injury report over here as well. Try to get an idea of who we actually have available. Uh, Lou Jed's door is questionable. Shea Gilders, Alexander, Mike Buscala, Alexif, po- uh, Pokuveski, Pokuveski, I apologize, is out. I can never say that dude's name. It gives me some trouble. Uh, Damian Lee, Kelly Oubre Jr., Eric Pascal, Clay Thompson, James Wiseman all ruled out for the Warriors. Looking at this Thunder team, uh, we're kind of seeing certain guys get just phased out of the rotation. Ken, Kenrich Williams being one of those guys. He hasn't played in I think, the last two or three games. He probably won't play in this one. They're just kind of just going towards these younger guys. We're seeing guys like Gabriel Deck start to play decent roles. And a lot of teams are taking that transition. So right now, being on top of the news, being hip to know who's actually going to be in the rotation, who's playing is going to be a key factor to actually winning at this point in time in the year. You'll see a couple of people start to take zeros, a couple of guys getting like 10 minutes. And uh, if you can just avoid the landmines, you should be good. There's going to be plenty of value out there during the next couple of weeks where you could just plug in the value, get the studs and avoid the landmines. And you'll probably cash on most nights. And that's my method of the madness. That's what I've been doing as well. Some of those nights end up being bigger. Some of them end up being smaller. But a win's a win in DFS. We'll take it. Not looking at a whole lot over here. If I was going to target anybody, it would probably be like Darius Baisley just for the upside. But I still don't like it going against this matchup against Draymond. Don't feel too great about it. So, honestly, I'm not playing anybody over here on OKC. If I was playing anyone, it would be simply be a game script and correlation play. If I'm, if I'm playing anybody on Golden State, I'd run it back with somebody. But that that's it. Uh, on Golden State, Steph Curry coming at 10-8. I won't be playing Steph Curry. Don't mind it if you want to. Don't fault you if you do. Like I said, I'd probably want to correlate it and run it back with somebody else. I just prefer Sabonis, Jokic, and Westbrook over him. So it's three guys over him. So I just don't see myself having any shares of Curry. Draymond coming in at 7,800. Absolutely love this matchup for Draymond. It's a picture-perfect matchup for him. He should just go absolutely beast mode in it. He put up 29 DK points in the game earlier. Um, the last game they just played on the 6th, but it was a game before that that he put up, like I believe it was like 60. So uh, he has triple-double upside in this matchup. If the game, for some reason, it, it does stay close, yeah, then Draymond's the guy I want to play. Allows me to get exposure to this game and still have some studs from that I prefer over Curry. So 
He's by no means a must play. I think he's a good play. The limited minutes would definitely hurt him. So it's really just a game script scenario. If you think that this game can stay intact close enough, I think Draymond is an absolutely fantastic play. Outside of him, though, I don't mind taking a stab at a guy like maybe like Kent Bazemore or Juan Toscano Anderson. Not the greatest price tags, but comfortable floors for both those guys. And they still have some wiggle room in their ceilings. All right. Now we can now we can go to a good game. That game, it was the lackluster in, in between the middle of the, the slate that we just had to get out of the way. No one's looking forward to that one. But the next one, it's got some implications. It's got some some seating implications. San Antonio Spurs traveling to Portland, taking on the Blazers in this one. 229 and a half game total. Portland being favored by four and a half points. No game total. I mean, no, I'm sorry. No injury report for either team. Both teams on the second half of a back-to-back so we're going to have to monitor that. We know that Derek White is still out for the Spurs. That's not going to come back any soon. Same thing with Trey Lyles. We'll have to monitor. They should not be resting. Like I said, there's some implications on this depending on uh, you know seeding and playing games uh, in this Western Conference. Both these two teams are being thrown around in there. So DeMar DeRozan coming in at 8,300. Yeah, I think he's worth it. He's not a guy I normally play. He's not a guy that I normally get very excited about, but he's averaging 49 DK points against the Blazers this season in two games. He's getting it done against them. I already talked about it. It's a very important game. He's going to have to shoot. He's going to have to handle the ball. This is important. If if, if they want this, they're going to need to play DeRozan 38 minutes in this one. So uh, I'll be looking at DeRozan at 38. He's not going to be uh, just that go-to guy for me, but if I land on him or if I want to just try to get a little contrarian as far as a guy that can get you a 50 and probably not have a lot of ownership with him, he'd be that type of guy. I was all over DeJounte Murray last night. I didn't get the exact game I wanted. It was an okay one. Uh, the shot attempts were there. Shot 11 for 22. Just didn't get a whole lot of defensive stats. Only one steal. Put up 22, 5, and 7 in that last one for 37 and a half DK points. I like him in this matchup as well. Don't mind going back to the well there. Jakob Pertl at 58, I love him. I like a lot of these Spurs guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's coming off of a big one himself. Put up a double-double with four blocks and a steal for 40 DK points in that last game against Sacramento. They're going to need some size knowing that they're going against uh, this front court. There's a lot of size in this front court between Canner, between Nurkic. They're going to need Pertl's size. They don't have much behind it outside of young guys who would just get bodied. So I, I imagine that this might be a back-to-back game where we see Pertl play big minutes, and that normally doesn't happen. Normally, on the any time the Spurs are on a back-to-back, we got to be a little bit cautious. But I don't think this is one of those scenarios that we see them necessarily rest. And if we do, hopefully, we have some of that news ahead of the time. So I'll just be looking at the main studs here. Uh, Jakob Pertl, DeJounte Murray, DeMar DeRozan, all those guys are very much at play. If you wanted to take stabs at you know Lonnie Walker, you could, but I think we'll have better value available. It'll probably get opened up, and I think our touchdowns of value, that was already a little bit better as well. Same thing with Vassal. I don't see myself going to either one of those guys. On the Portland side of the ball, pretty much the same thing I just said. Everybody's in play. Lillard's in play. Uh, but at 10-1, do I end up playing him? No, probably not. I think I'll just stick with the guys that are about $900 more, looking at Jokic, looking at Westbrook, and looking at Sabonis. I think I prefer all three of those guys over Lillard just slightly. But played him yesterday, got my 60 out of him, 58 DK points. Again, it's Lillard time. This dude's going to be dropping 30 a night now that they need to win. When it's a must-win situation, when it's a big moment, that's when he steps up. And he just takes everything into his hands. So I won't be playing any CJ. For all that being said, I just expect this to be Lillard time for the next week or so. CJ will get his, don't get me wrong. But I just don't feel like guessing on the nights where which night CJ is going to outscore Lillard. Nurkic coming in at 7-2. I'm, I'm always up for playing Nurkic. I play Nurkic on like a nightly basis. He finally played more than 30 minutes. I believe that was the first time this season he's played more than 30 minutes against the Lakers. He double-doubled. It wasn't a huge one. 10-13, uh, and 13, though. 5-8 of eight from the floor. It's another great matchup for him. I imagine that he eats here as well. So if you want to play Nurkic at 72, he's a great play. He's, a, he's averaging about a point per minute against this team. So if he's playing 30... Probably looking at between 30 and 40 DK points, but he, Nurkic has the upside to get you 60 on any night. That's why you like to play him. So you always feel pretty comfortable about his floor, but that ceiling is just absurd as well. And then I don't, I don't even mind if you need to, if you land on it, looking at a guy like Carmelo Anthony. He's had some down game coming off of an awful, awful game where he only put up three and a half DK points. But we've seen time and time again over the past week or two where he's pretty much had a floor of what feels like 20, and we've seen him drop that mid-20s a few times. Obviously, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, floor about 20. We've seen a couple games in between there that could be lower, and that's the the volatility that comes with them. But this just feels like one of those matchups where I could see him scoring off the bench pretty good. I could see him getting like 18 actual points or something like that. And we're cruising. We only got two games left. 
you know, see, that's the thing. Maybe you guys wanted to hear the long, drawn-out Santino voice, and I apologize. You're going to miss that. You're not going to get it. I'm sure he's going to listen to this, and he'll probably take his fair share of rips on me during uh, tomorrow's show. So I got, I got to get him in. I got to get him in while I could. Houston Rockets on the second half of back-to-back, traveling to Utah, taking on the Jazz. Talking about game totals. 227 and a half game total, 14 and a half point spread in this one. So another massive spread. It's a lot of games that are going to be a little bit dicey. Second half of a back to back for both teams, actually, I believe. So uh, no injury report. We're not going to have it. And that's something that we need to have, especially for this Rockets team, because they are basically they're running on empty. They're running on fumes right now. So Christian Wood, I believe, is expected to miss. Uh, I think they said the next two games, and he just missed one. We're going to have to see about Kevin Porter Jr. dealing with that ankle injury. He missed Friday's game. We're going to have to see about Jay Sean Tate in his knee. He missed Friday's game. They basically just are, are running nothing out here. I believe DJ Wilson, Avery Bradley, Sterling Brown, they all missed as well. They did have DJ Augustine and Daniel House available. They played limited minutes. I wouldn't touch either one of those guys with a 10-foot pole. I'm going to go back to the well. Kevin Martin Jr., Monty Brooks, both these guys, you could just play them. Anthony Lamb, you could just play them. They're great values. If they have to play 30-plus minutes with the usage and garbage time, they should have no problem getting there. I don't care about this matchup just simply because we're playing them because we expect them to get blown out anyway. We're not. I, I don't think any of these guys would necessarily start if, you know, DJ Augustine and there, those other guys are available. But it doesn't mean they're not going to play 30-plus minutes. So lock those guys in. Those are some of the value that we're going to be looking at. Kevin Martin Jr. and Imani Brooks would be the favorites. Kelly Olenek coming in at 8,600. Not a guy that we normally want to pay 86 for, but he's just been routinely putting in 48-plus DK points over the past three games, double-doubling, doing everything that he could for this team. He's basically their only center available. He's getting up there at 86, so I don't think I'll have the price tag uh, or the, the money to spend on him because I already talked about I do want to try to play two studs, and if I could get two studs, that's what I'm doing. Kelly Olenek, yes, he can put up the points of a stud, but... You know, this doesn't feel like the matchup I want to target him. I get it. He's probably going to have to play 40-plus minutes again. They have no centers, but... Even having Rudy Gobert near you for a little while could be a little bit of a pest. With all that being said, he is very much in play. And if you want to just keep riding it, if he's been winning you money, I don't blame you. Uh, he could, for everything I said about Rudy Gobert being a, a, a pest in the paint, Kelly Olenek could take advantage of the matchup and stretch him out, pull Rudy Gobert out of the paint a little bit. But that would also involve this game staying relatively close. So that's it for me. It will be those guys. But again, just keep an eye on the news. If you start to see guys like Kevin Porter Jr., for National Nurses Week, Fortis is honoring the millions of nursing professionals in our community, caring for loved ones. More so today, the need for nurses is vital. And Fortis College and Institutes recruits people like you to train to become a nurse. Do you want to be a nurse? Start your essential career in nursing with a Fortis education. Just visit fortis.edu to learn about hybrid instruction and online enrollment. Then talk to Fortis by dialing pound 250, keyword nursing school. Jay Sean Tate play, then, yeah, ease back off of some of the value a little bit. On the Jazz side of the ball, we're not spending up on anybody here. Uh, it's just, why? I'm not paying 8800 for Rudy Gobert if Rudy Gobert is going to play 26 minutes. Same thing with Clarkson. Uh, 7600 for Jordan Clarkson. If I knew Jordan Clarkson's playing 37 or 36 minutes, sign me up. This is a fantastic matchup, fantastic game environment. I would love it. I'd probably be overweight on it. But we just don't know. If he comes out here and plays 25 minutes, it gives us 25 DK points. That's not going to work at 7,600. We're not taking that. And that's pretty much what he's averaging against his team this year. It's about a point per minute. So we really just need him to play the minutes. And that's it, man. I don't think I'm going to anything here. I don't think I'm going to too much. It's just you saw the spread. You saw the game total. It's just why do it? We have some games that we can target heavily. We can get some of the some of the value in there. We can play some of those Houston guys and get some value and get some exposure where we just don't need to go overboard. And then we have the final game of the night, the Brooklyn Nets traveling to Denver. Everyone's favorite game, Everyone, one that everyone's looking forward to. Take it on the Nuggets. Nuggets on the second half of a back-to-back for the Nets. Chris Chioza, Spencer Dinwiddie, James Harden all ruled out this game. Is coming in at a 230.5 game total, Brooklyn being favored by 2.5 points. So we'll start off with Brooklyn, looking at this team. These guys are very much in play, but with all these guys, I think, you know, let's let's go through. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys priced over 10K tonight. So there's nine guys priced over 10K. So that's where the decisions come in, and none of the Brooklyn guys make it for me. I just told you, it's going to be Jokic, it's going to be Sabonis, it's going to be Westbrook. Don't feel like I'm going to have any shares of Kyrie or Durant. If I had to pick one of those guys, 
I'd probably lean Durant. Uh, Kyrie got the game last one, but that's just the way I feel. I just, I'm just i not a big Kyrie guy. I don't play Kyrie too often. Love him as an actual talent player. I just don't play him at DFS all that often. Anybody else on this team doesn't really isn't really having my interest. They're probably going to have to go a little bit bigger at center knowing it's against Jokic. So I imagine this is one of those games where we see DeAndre Jordan play a few extra minutes. So if you want to look that way at 3,800, he's available. I just don't see them being able to get away with Blake Griffin on him for too, too long. Blake will uh, he'll get cooked. It's just that simple. He'll get cooked, and I'm not playing Blake Griffin. So not a whole lot of interest for me on this net side of the ball, which seems you know a little weird, a little counterintuitive. But uh, I do think I will have some of those nuggets on the other side. So we'll get to that side of the ball right now. Nikola Jokic, you heard me say his name about 15 times already. And, yeah, he's very much in play. 10-9. Love this matchup. Love the game environment. Love the game total. Love everything about it. He put up 67 DK points against his team earlier in the season. Almost triple-doubled. He was two rebounds shy. I expect much of the same. Granted, he got seven steals in that game. I don't expect that to happen. But I would expect a few more rebounds and a few more points for him. Great matchup. I'm feeling like a 60-point floor for the Joker here. Outside of him, I don't think I'll go to Michael Porter Jr. Wouldn't fault you if you wanted to. I, like I just said, I love the game environment. I love everything about it. He did not play in this matchup earlier in the season. Uh, he's 8,700, though, so you have to make some tough decisions. And we already talked about a few guys. I think I'd prefer Olenek over him um, at a similar price tag. For everything I just said about Olenek and how I didn't really want to play him, I prefer him over uh, Michael Porter Jr. Capazzo coming in at 5,600. He is one of the lone guards. He's pretty much locked into 30-plus minutes now on a nightly basis. This should be a good game environment for him to get some steals. Would not expect a lot from him offensively. He's going to be chasing Kyrie Irving it down pretty much all day. And, you know, not a guy that necessarily gets into foul trouble, but he's going to get handsy in here. So it's either going to be very good or very good bad for Capazzo. I don't trust him in cash. I think I would limit him to tournaments only in this kind of environment and this kind of game script. But uh, he's definitely in play at 5,600. And then Aaron Gordon coming in at 49. I like him in this matchup as well. I touched on it. I expect to start to slowly see a few more minutes for Aaron Gordon. He's averaged 42 DK points against the, the Nets this season. Granted, some of those games were not on the Nuggets. <laughs> different game script, different environment, different scenario. But he's definitely in play at 4,900. He's a GPP play for me. Not a guy that I expect to have a whole lot of ownership. And that's it. That rounds us out. That brings us home. That is all seven games. That brings us to our player tiers. So we touched on it. Uh, we talked about the expensive guys, I said, probably about three times. So, you know, Westbrook will be that top guy for me. He will be the guy at the top. But just to keep it on brand and, and kind of go with a guy that is a little less expensive, not in that eight, you know, less than 8K, we'll say. Uh, expensive guy less than AK, I would say Jonas Valanciunas at 7,900. Absolutely love that play. Love the center play for him. Would it even expect a whole lot of ownership for him? But this feels like it's got 45 to 50 written on it for Jonas Valanciunas. So sign me up. Revenge narrative going against his former team, the Raptors. All right. Now for the mid-tier play, the guy that I'm going to have that's kind of floating around. I guess he could have been my mid-tier play, but you know we'll go we'll go with the expensive play. We'll go right back down to the well over down there in Houston. Kevin Martin Jr. at 5,300. He's just been smacking in 40-plus point games in this garbage time. And with these guys most likely expected to sit again, we could probably just continue riding that. Uh, I don't have no problem there. So Kevin Martin Jr., keep an eye on him. And for some value, we got some decent value. Uh, if we want a dumpster dive, we could do that. That's what we're hoping to do to get two studs in there. So hopefully some more value opens up because as of right now, uh, if we're dumpster diving, it's probably going to be with some of those Houston guys. It might be with some of the Toronto guys that we could take advantage of. But I'll go uh, I'll go 4,700, and I'll say my boy Malachi Flynn touched on it. Like that game script, like the environment. No Van Bleet, no Lowry. And Flynn should be locked into 30-plus minutes at that point guard spot. So sign me up there. Feels like I can't miss value. Take the free square. And that's it. That is the player tier. So thank you guys for listening. As always, really appreciate it. If you want to give me a follow, you can find me on Twitter at Mike Patria, M-I-K-E-A-P-O-T-R-I-A. Give the thumbs up, the rate review, subscribe to the show anywhere you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever it may be. We really do appreciate it, guys. You screenshot that. You send it on over to us that you gave us a five-star thumbs up. We've got a little goodies for you. Might be able to hook you up with a little gift, a uh, little, little fun stuff that we got going on, but... We'll see. We'll see. We did a little contest, uh, but we need to get those reviews up, guys. And we also want to hear your feedback. We want to hear how we can get better. Uh, you know, we, we, that's how we added this player tier section in. 
It was just simple, simple feedback through the reviews. We saw that people wanted to hear it. We saw it a few times in there. We said, you know what? Let's give the people what they want. But that is it. Santino will be back with your show tomorrow morning since we switched. I will get that Sunday morning off. I will be back that Sunday night handling that night show, though, for Monday's card. Thank you guys for listening. Let's go out there. Let's take down some contests, some tournaments, some GPPs. But mostly, let's enjoy our weekend. It's been a nice weekend. Have a good one, guys. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.